a popular topic around the campfire in virtually any hunting camp is penetration. <laughs> and no, get your damn minds out of the gutter because I'm talking about bullet penetration here. Although both topics are typically fair game around the campfire at a hunting camp. Bullet penetration is a very important topic when it comes to types of hunting like dangerous game hunting. And it's usually in that context where it's debated the most. But assuming that the shot angle and the medium are exactly the same, whether that medium be bone tissue or even something like ballistics gel, there are five factors that determine how good a bullet's going to penetrate within that medium. And these factors are velocity, mass, construction, shape, and the material that the bullet is made out of. In this video, I'll discuss the five factors individually and explain how they contribute to your bullet's penetration. But first, I need to wean you off the sectional density lie that you've been fed for many years. We used to predict the penetration properties of a bullet through a number known as sectional density. Sectional density is calculated using the projectile's mass and diameter. If every bullet was constructed exactly the same, sectional density actually might mean something, but most bullets are drastically different from other bullets. <laughs> With 99% of the hunting bu bullets out there, as soon as that bullet touches something, its mass and shape change. And when that happens, all of your neat little sectional density numbers go right out the window. <laughs> the bullet material and the construction of the bullet determine the shape and the mass at that point after impact. Sectional density also completely ignores velocity and a bullet needs kinetic energy to penetrate so you can't have that without velocity. <laughs> if I throw a 180 grain TSX at you, it'll probably bounce off your chest and piss you off, or annoy you. But if that same 180 grain TSX is going 2,500 feet per second, it's probably gonna travel through several people. So when we started using bonded and monometal bullets for hunting, Sectional density numbers really didn't matter that much anymore, and we actually started using lighter bullets with lower sectional density for hunting. I mentioned earlier that a bullet cannot penetrate without velocity because penetration requires energy, and kinetic energy can't exist without velocity. Bullets with less mass traveling faster will often outpenetrate slower, heavier bullets. A lot of people don't realize that. But this assumes that the bullet's design and material allow it to retain its mass through its entire energy duration. Some bullets, like cup and core bullets, lose mass really fast, so they penetrate less at a higher velocity. In contrast to that, monometal bullets, you know, hold together really well and retain mass at those higher velocities, so they're going to penetrate deeper with more velocity. Velocity also contributes to stability. You know, a, a stable bullet will penetrate deeper and in a straighter path through any medium. In this regard, a bullet's lineal speed, its actual lineal velocity, and its rotational velocity can lead to better penetration. So speed and twist rate also come into play here. As mentioned in the last chapter, penetration does require energy. And as we already discussed, velocity has a big part of that kinetic energy. But the other part of that equation is mass commonly referred to as bullet weight. Given a fixed velocity of a projectile, the more mass it has, 
the higher the kinetic energy will be. But ma the mass of a bullet does more for us than just increase a bullet's energy. Mass gives a bullet momentum. Kinetic energy has a magnitude, but momentum has both a magnitude and a direction. It's a vector quantity. After your bullet hits an animal and goes into it, kinetic energy becomes less important and the momentum properties of a bullet tend to take over as it uh, continues traveling through. So a heavier bullet of the same velocity will always penetrate deeper due to momentum. Bullet construction also plays an important role here. Bonded and model metal bullets retain more mass after the initial impact, allowing the bullet to penetrate deeper. Bullet construction is one of the single most important factors that will determine bullet penetration. Bullet construction is much more important than a number like sectional density is. A lead cup and core bullet designed for fragmenting will shed mass very quickly and as a result will have a short energy duration and have very little momentum to carry it through the medium. When using a, uh, a bonded or copper expanding bullet, these retain most of their mass after impact and will penetrate much deeper than any fragmenting bullet will. These bullets are also better at angled shots like your quartering shots and they have less tendency for the forces of the bullet going through the animal to exceed the bullet's yield strength so they work better at higher velocities. Bullets can also be constructed for both fragmenting and penetrating in the same bullet, like a Nosler partition or one of the modern cutting edge bullets. So you get the tissue damage from detached bullet fragments and a rear core that penetrates deeper or completely through the animal. And the ultimate bullets for penetration are dangerous game solid bullets. Dangerous game solids are designed not to expand or deform at all. This lack of uh, expansion or deformation allows for very deep penetration. As a matter of fact, usually when you, uh, you, know, you shoot an elephant or a cape buffalo with one of these uh, modern copper solids uh, and you actually recover the bullet, it's actually in such pristine condition you could probably reload it again. In this chapter, I'm going to discuss something that's seldom talked about, and that's bullet shape. Let's say you have a golf ball and an arrow that both weigh one and a half ounces, and they're both impacting your chest at 100 miles an hour. The golf ball will be painful and might leave a nasty bruise on your chest, but the arrow will probably kill you. This is based solely on the shape of those projectiles. So let's discuss bullet shape in the context of rifle bullets for hunting. Bullet shape actually has a drastic impact on penetration, but only the shape of the bullet after it hits the target really matters. The shape of the bullet before it hits the target is less important for penetration. Generally, bullets that remain long and slender while they're inside the target medium are going to penetrate better. And bullets with pointier tips don't always penetrate better either, so you can't really go by that. Look at dangerous game solids, for instance. A uh, flat nose dangerous game solid will out-penetrate a round nose solid almost every time. I know this goes against conventional wisdom, but it's true, and it proves that bullet shape really matters. The material or materials that a bullet is made out of can also make a huge difference in penetration. A really soft lead bullet will probably deform and lose a lot of its mass easily, and bullets like that will exhibit very little penetration. But a hard cast lead bullet 
which is made of a much harder alloy, will penetrate much deeper than a soft lead bullet will. I mean, even look at some of the military and law enforcement ammunition that they use to pierce armor. And, you know, a lot of that has a tungsten penetrator inside the bullet. Using an expanding mono metal bullet, you can achieve 100% weight retention. You know, and add to this that copper is lighter than lead. Mono metal bullets are usually longer for weight. You know, a lot of times they're a lot longer for weight. And this allows copper mono metal bullets to penetrate the deepest of all the hunting bullets because they maintain 100% of their mass and they're generally uh, longer in length for caliber. The great penetration qualities of copper bullets also allows the hunter to kind of step down in bullet weight and enjoy flatter trajectories and less recoil with the same cartridge. Most African PHs and elephant hunters have switched to copper solids, but some hunters, you know, like uh, predator hunters or maybe a lot of deer hunters, want a softer lead bullet with more that exhibits more fragmentation and less penetration. So the material your bullet's made out of does really matter. I tried to present this lesson in the shortest and easiest format possible. For some, it's going to be over their head, but for others, my presentation will seem oversimplified. My goal with this video is to break you from the shackles of sectional density and introduce you to the more important attributes of a bullet when it comes to penetration. Sectional density was developed to optimize military artillery, not to describe a hunting bullet. As I stated in this video, hunters often desire different levels of bullet penetration. A fragmenting bullet might be better for a thin skin game or predator hunting, where penetration is kind of an afterthought. You know, for very large and dangerous game though, penetration is likely the most desired quality in a bullet. We're very lucky today because we have a big variety of hunting bullets available to us, so we could custom tailor our bullet to almost any situation. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching, and as always, good hunting.